All right, next up under the special menu, we're going to look at uh, the next group of commands. We're going to look at center cursor, insert marker, insert region, insert sample loop, and insert command. We've looked at uh, parts of a couple of these in the past, but we'll uh, look at them and talk about them here a little bit more. Okay, so the next item here up under the special menu is going to be center cursor. Now, this is primarily used when you're zoomed way in on something. And let's say I'm zoomed in, going a little bit further on this particular file, and I have been looking at this area right here, and let's see, I've got the cursor here because I'm just playing this, this section because I want to look, look for something. And I start to scroll around on the screen, and I'm looking for another spot, or I'm looking for a marker, or something like that. But I want to get back to where I was, and I want to get the cursor in the center of my screen. So, literally, it's I come up here and hit it, and bam, it pops back. So wherever the cursor is located in the file at that point in time will jump back to the center of the screen. Primarily a useful command for when you're zoomed way in. So if you're zoomed way in in a file and you're getting lost and you want to get back where you were, you know, you were cruising around looking for a marker someplace or something like that, you can always go back up here and use this command um, or the, the number, the asterisk key um, will also do it for you as well too. So if I'm over here and I hit the asterisk key, it'll jump back too as well. Uh, that's on the number pad. So that's that one. Then we've got insert marker, and it's pretty much literally what it says. So if I'm at a specific spot in my song here, and I want to hit right here, and just before this section comes in, I want to lay down a marker. I can come up here, and I can insert marker. Frankly, I rarely ever use this menu pull down to insert a marker. I use always usually just use the keyboard shortcut, which is literally just the M key. And especially if you're trying to tap things in on a beat, or you're trying to tap things to a cue or something like that, um, it's really easy and convenient to do that. Let's, uh, let me zoom back out just a little bit more, move the cursor back here, and then we'll tap in a few markers as we play. So you can see how I was just tapping the M key the whole time, just laying in those markers. Now, it, it, the way the preferences are set up in, in SoundForge right now, it's going to go ahead and just keep adding them numerically and keep going higher in value. Um, however, once I've got them in here, I can double click on it and I can give it a name. So I can give this one, you know, like first beat. And uh, it is a marker, not a region. We'll look at the difference in a second here. So that way then when I say OK, then the name actually shows up here uh, on the file, so I can reference it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's where the first beat starts, and I can see that kind of thing. Um, it makes it makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier to uh, be able to find stuff when you name it. But if you're just dropping them in, you know, uh, on the fly using like the the key command again, it'll just you know add them in numerically. Let's go ahead and undo. Undo all of these. We'll just kind of keep backing out here. Now the next command here is going to be insert region. Now a region is, as we've kind of already seen in some other movies, it's a, it's a area of the file. So it's not just a point, which is where the cursor is right now, and which is where we can lay down a marker. So if we want to define a region, let's say uh, this area right here. Just this little, that little guitar riff up to this point right here. And so now that I've highlighted and selected that area, go back up here, and now I can insert a region. Again, I typically don't go up here to the uh, pull-down menu for this. I usually use, use the R key on the keyboard as a keyboard shortcut. So we'll do insert region. And you notice because I went up there and selected it that way, that it comes up as a default with the region selected here as opposed to the marker. And you can tell the difference, too, obviously, because the marker is just a point in time, so there's just a start point, whereas a region has a start, an end, and a duration, a length. And you have, you know, input, a format, 
that you can choose as well as if you're associating a trigger with it, such as a MIDI trigger or something like that. You can do that as well too. The automatic labeling like I talked about where it's 01, 02, 03, etc. You do have control over how that works. If you click down here, and this is a shortcut into the preferences, which we'll get into and, and talk about later, all the various tabs here. But here it, it talks about the region labels using the counters and insert and insert leading zeros, the marker labels, et cetera. Same, same with using the counter starting at one, et cetera, et cetera. So we define this region as we can just define it as a guitar um, solo, sort of. And there you go. There's that region defined. So now we've got that region. We can right click on it. We can select it. We can right click on it. We can delete it. We can edit it, split it, update it. Editing it takes us back here to this menu so we could change the name or we can also play it if we want to. Play it looped. So it, that's how you easily can define regions. Next up here um, is insert sample loop. Now insert sample loop, once you've got a um, region or even just an area selection chosen, you can bring up this menu and then you can choose what kind of loop it's going to be. Is it going to be a one shot? If that's the case, then there's really nothing else that you can kind of add to it or anything, any other data that you need to append to the loop that you're creating. However, if you want it to be sustaining or sustaining with a release, then you can um, choose whether it's an infinite loop, whether it just keeps looping over and over and over again, or whether it has a finite number of loops before it stops. These types of uh, parameters are primarily, uh, especially the loop count, apply more when you're going to be actually using the loop as something being triggered by a sampler or something along those lines. If it's going to be something that you're using in a, a loop based audio program such as Acid or Logic or GarageBand or something like that, then you probably want it to be an infinite loop. And you also want to be able to, you know, give it some other other parameters such as uh, a MIDI Unity note. And th these, these parameters down here tie primarily into creating loops that are going to be used in samplers and things along those lines. So you can play it again. <laughs> say OK, and then it also then adds this loop label to it, so now that you know that it has been defined as a loop. The last thing we'll look at in this movie is Insert Command. Now, Insert Command is kind of interesting, and it really only applies to the fact that you're putting metadata into a file. So, and it really only applies at the per current cursor position or a marker. Let, let's put a marker here just for, uh, for sake of uh, argument. And we've got an art, uh, a marker here, and let's name this marker. Let's go and edit it. And let's just call it, oh, let's call it a URL trigger. So now that I've got my marker and I've got my cursor in the same place, so if I come up here and I go to insert command, it gives me this command properties box. And what this is doing is it's um, allowing me to insert a command. There's lots of, there's different types. I could in, in, insert an URL, text. I could insert the title of the song, author, copyright, um, a hotspot, for example, that's associated when the cursor or, or when the playback head hits a specific, this specific spot where the command is located in the file. And this all mostly always applies to streaming media or window or, or stuff that's based on the web. Because really what command markers are indicating is when an instruction will occur in a streaming media file. You can then use command markers to display headlines, captions, links to websites, or all, all the other functions you can see here. So it's primarily designed for streaming media stuff, things that are going to be on the web, and primarily also for Windows Media, Windows Media 9, Windows Media 10, uh, the later versions of Windows Media. But it's kind of a cool feature, you know, and you can do cool stuff with it.